Hi, and welcome to a short tutorial on how to install and use the data integration service on Fliplet. So we want to start from the documentation website. You want to head to integrations, data integration service. Now, if we look at the minimum requirements, you'll see that you'll need a um, relatively low powered machine. Uh, I'm currently using a Windows laptop, but you can use any Unix or Mac OS or even other distributions. We first want to try installing Node.js, which is an open source software language, um, which we use for this software. So you just want to go to the website of Node.js and you click the download button, then wait until the installer downloads. And then you just go through the process. It should only take a few seconds. You just um, want to install Node.js and then make sure that it's added to the path. So then your terminal will have it available. So let's just install it. And in a few moments, we should have available in the start menu um, a new application, which is Node.js command prompt. Now, you can use any terminal, but if you use the Node.js one, you shouldn't have any problem going forward. forward. So you can just um, use that one for this demo. Okay. So, I'm just going to open up the terminal and this is the Node.js terminal, which is like a common prompt with Node.js installed. Now, if we head back to the developer website, you will see that it's asking you to install a package, the Fliplet agent, which is our software. And you just have to install to, sorry, to copy this command. You just wanna paste the command here and hit return. And this should install the Fliplet agent within just a few seconds. And meanwhile, I'm just gonna put these on a side. Um, you can see that if, you, if you're having any problem because maybe your company is behind a firewall, then you may have to disable strict SSL validation. And this is quite common if you are behind a proxy. Now, if that's not the case, Within a few seconds, you should uh, you just you should see the um, message that says "flip that the agent is installed," and we can try checking the version of the Fliplet agent. It says 1.12. Now, it, when we release new versions, you can just come to this terminal and then type npm update minus g to just install a new version. Okay, so to get started. We want to go to a folder in our file system and then create a new file. Now, Fliplet agent supports two specific methods. The first one is like a simple mode, which uses YAML files. You can see um, a sample here. Uh, and if you scroll a little further, you will see that, a second, you can see there is advanced use, which uses JavaScript files, which are more advanced, but can um, perform more operations than they are, as the name suggests, more advanced. For this demo, we were gonna, we're going to try out the YAML files. So we are just going to uh, sample the directory app created, and then we want to open up these in File Explorer. Okay. So let's create a new file and then we will call it sample.yaml. Okay, so um, you are more than welcome to just use a notepad, but as we, as I have it, a text editor installed, like Visual Studio Code, then it's gonna highlight my syntax as you can see in these examples. So I'm just gonna use that because it's gonna make things a little simpler. 
Okay, so let me just um, open up this one in a new folder. Mm -hmm. And then I'll bring this here. Okay, right. And then I'll, sorry, I'm just gonna move the notepad here on the side. Okay, so let's head back to the website and we want to copy the initial sample that we're gonna use for setting up the, um, the initial um, example that will be about pushing data from a database, like a SQL Server database, to Fliplet um, APIs. So let's see how it goes. First, we want to copy the whole file, and then, as you can see, we're going to need an OAuth token. Now, this is something you're going to get from Flipper Studio. And as we need to, to get that, we're also going to create a data source, which is going to be the target of our synchronization. So let's head back to here, and then we go to Flipper Studio. Okay. So I'm going to my app, and then if you click on the app name or the cog icon here, then you're gonna see on this model, you can go to app tokens, and then I can create a new app token, which is gonna be just for DIS. So in case, you know, your machine gets compromised, you can just revoke the token at any time. I'm just gonna give it a name, and then I wanna copy the token and then paste it back here. Okay, great. I also want to copy the ID because I want to add permissions of this token to a data source I will be creating. So if I go back to my app data and then I create a new data source and let's call it users. Okay, and then I go to studio user permissions. I wanna add a new user and then paste that ID and then just hit return here. And this will add permissions to DIS to be able to perform operations on this data source. Now, I also need to add some security rules for this data source. For the sake of this demo, I'm just going to add full uh, permissions. Now, in real use, you would possibly specify, you know, like specific users or to specific apps. And then I'm going to save and apply. Okay, great. Now the last thing we need from here is the ID of this data source. So let's copy the ID from here and then we head back to Visual Studio, to my sample file, and then we paste back the ID here. Okay, now the next part will be about configuring the database where the data is read from. On my machine, I have installed a MySQL server, which I have running. You can see here, this is the management console. You may be familiar with it. So I have a database which has the identifier SQL Express, and it's running on my machine, which is a surface. There is a user table, and as you can see, I'm doing like a sample query just to find out that there's two records. They have three columns, email, field, full users, and updated that. Okay, that's fantastic. So I know what data um, I should be using for connecting to this database. So let's head back here. And then I'm gonna say the database driver is MS SQL. That's correct. The um, the host will be Surface, which is the name of my machine. Um, this would have been your uh, domain name maybe, or like a, a URL. It's gonna be maybe a host name, uh, depending on the case. Now, I'm also going to specify my username, which is, uh, let's say, super admin for now. It's gonna be my local database, so that's fine. And I wanna specify a password, which is the same password as before, but just in uh, as a string, because I wanna pass the password as a string and not a number. And then my database port, which on my machine is going to be this number. 
and then the database name, which um, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Fliplet. Let's just find that. And it's called Fliplet. There you go. So I'm just going back here and then type Fliplet. Okay, great. Now, as I'm using um, a Microsoft, Microsoft SQL, then I also want to specify the instance name. So I'm gonna uncomment out this line and then type SQL Express, which is the name of my uh, SQL instance. And I also have encrypted the instance. So I'm just gonna uncomment out this one, which is gonna ensure that the data is encrypted within transit. Okay, so the next part will be about making sure that the description is accurate. This is actually fine for the demo. Sync on init when left to true will make sure that the data is synced when the script starts. And then you can set up the frequency here as well. Now the query, as you can see, is like a sample query that we've put together. Um, the query we wanna, we wanna use on this database will be, let me replace it with my query, which is gonna be select the email, the full name, updated that from users. It's the data you have seen previously on my screen. And then the primary column that I have on my uh, table is actually the email. Now in most scenarios, this will be maybe like user ID, uh, like an auto increment or so, some sort of, but in my case, it's like email. And then the timestamp column, it's gonna be required for um, ensuring that the data can be updated over time. Uh, so then whenever you change the data in your database, the data is synchronized back to Fliplet. If you recall, I have a column, a date time column in, my, in Microsoft SQL called updated at. Okay, and that is basically it. So we should be good to go. Now, if we head back to our terminal, I'm just gonna make it a little wider. And then we want to type fliplet dash agent start and then the path to the file, which is called, I believe, sample in this folder. And then you just hit return. And as you can see here, this is currently initializing the collection, the connection with the source database. And that's it, that is finished. So what you can see here is that it has authenticated with Fliplet, configure the operation to push data to the data source you have specified, and then it tried to push the to, sorry, to fetch the data. So the data source had zero entries. The data source was empty from Fliplet um, APIs. Then it was fetching data from your SQL server on your computer. And then it fetched two rows from the database. And these two rows have been marked for inserting. And then this now is listening for, uh, well, it's gonna run in 15 minutes to see if there's any update. Now I'm gonna hit Control C twice. Okay, just to try to run, to quit and then run it again to see what happens. Okay, so what you can see is that it's fetching two rows from the data source on Fliplet. There's two rows in the database, the local database, and both rows do not require updating. Um, so no data has been written to Fliplet servers. Now, what that means is that if we go back to Fliplet and we go back to our user's data source, we have the data that has been created by this, which is fantastic. And if now we go back to the table we have, then any new data we would be adding here would have been reflected as an update uh, automatically. So if we add a new um, a new row here, then or like delete one, you know, that's going to be synchronized automatically. And that's just, that's essentially how it works. Like you can keep the script running on your machine 
and as the script says, you're good to go. Or you can also install it as a service on Windows. Now, if you want to do so, you're just gonna want to go to this page and then if you click on install the agent as a service, you can see that it only requires you an extra step, which is about running fliplet agent install and then a path to the uh, YAML file. And that's essentially it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. Um, we will be making a few more outlining how to use the advanced mode for pushing and pulling operations to Fliplet. Um, so stay tuned for more videos. And thank you.